Welcome to Pactus.org and the podcast of philosophical and critical thinking points and how to make them in the classroom. Today we're going to look at the characteristics of a good hypothesis. It's kind of a field guide you can carry around with you and when you develop a hypothesis to explain something in the world around you, you can apply it to that hypothesis. So here we go. Point one. Does your hypothesis explain all the facts? For example, if you believe, say, that the moon landings were faked, are all the facts at your disposal explained by your hypothesis? Number two, is it in accord with generally accepted principles? Now, these are usually physical or psychological. For example, the cat got on the roof through an anti-gravity device probably doesn't fit. Number three, does it simplify the problem? That is, does it make things easier to understand and not harder? For example, if you believe that crop circles are caused by aliens, you are invoking the existence of a huge alien civilization simply to explain why someone's doing donuts in your complex. Number four, is it the simplest hypothesis of all of those that you can come up with? Now, this is Occam's razor, the idea that the simplest hypothesis is usually the best one. And number five, is it falsifiable? That is, can I say under what conditions my hypothesis can be proved to be wrong? Now, this is a very important one. For example, if someone claims to have psychic powers, they should be able to say, I will undergo an experiment, and if I fail that experiment, it means I don't have psychic powers. But that never happens. The goalposts are always shifted. It always failed because there was negative energy or a skeptical attitude or something like that. Under no conditions can you falsify a psychic's power. And this is really what separates science and pseudoscience. More of that in another podcast.